my uh, my dad, uh, was, <laughs> who was later uh, he was killed flying the Navy, but before he managed to do that to himself, he was uh, practicing out here in El Centro doing some training, and uh, his mom and dad came out from Oklahoma to visit him. And when they uh, had finished with their visit, they got their old car and they were heading back to Oklahoma. And my dad uh, had scheduled a training hunt for himself. I grew up at the Warren Naval Air Station in Moffett Field when I was a kid. But um, anyway, he timed it just right. So when my uh, grandma and grandpa were about 200 miles away from El Centro, someplace between here and Oklahoma, my dad was uh, up in the air and he was flying in Skyhawk and they board and uh, he uh, saw their car on the ground on the highway and uh, went down uh, to the, the treetop level and buzzed their car. <laughs> and uh, they pulled off the highway and uh, my, my grandma and grandma got out of the car and proceeded to, to watch my dad give him an air show um, over someplace in Arizona. You know, uh, Little did my dad know, though, that coming down the, uh, the highway was a, uh, a rear admiral and his family <laughs> vacation. Uh, and, and, and he saw this uh, plane doing these things uh, off the highway and saw this car and got out and watched and watched and watched my dad go back and forth and rolls and, and uh, whatever. And, uh, he, he thought to himself, you know, he said, I, I, I just don't think that that's quite, uh, uh, you know, should be going on. Anyway, he made some phone calls. When my dad landed back at El Centro, his stripper was waiting for him. And uh, so my dad and, and says he you know, was never going to be captain after that. But, uh, anyway, so El Centro, in uh, Northern California, as I told you, um, one of the, uh, the challenges that we have with the Economic Development Administration, particularly with rural areas, is that we get a lot of uh, communities coming into uh, the agency, the Commerce Department, that are only separated by five or six miles. And um, they're all asking uh, for different uh, grants of different types. And, you know, we will always do uh, the one-off water towers and the one-off railroad spurs and the one-off uh, water systems for industrial parks, but what we're looking for now, what we've been looking for the last five or six years, are projects just like uh, this one. And the reason why the mega region idea is so important to us is because we don't have uh, a huge budget by uh, you know, government standards. Our, our program budget, which I think there, there's some good news uh, filtering out of the stimulus package that they are going to increase. Um, infrastructure spending and, and how that you know, relates to job creation is, is being argued back and forth right now. But our budget uh, for the past several years has been static at about $300 million. And that's a, that's a lot of money. And uh, you know, our grants range from fifty dollars to $60,000 up to five or $6 million a piece. But the fact of the matter is, is that there are so many areas in this country who need that kind of uh, priming, pump priming, that we're not able to do everything we want to do, or that we're asked to do. So um, when the Imperial uh, Valley and San Diego folks uh, came together and talked to us, we you know, immediately thought that this was the kind of, of large impact government grant that we should get involved in. And we're uh, crazy about this idea. We think it's uh, going to be replicated across the country. Um, the, the, the sad fact of the matter is, is that Unfortunately, in many communities uh, across the country, there is no cross pollinization from the business community with the local government, local government with the state officials, and the, you know, the senators to be commended on her leadership in bringing all of you together and making the grant possible. But because that is the one thing uh, Julie and Tim and the senator have, and that you all have going for you that many other regions of the country don't, and that's leadership. I know it sounds trite, it sounds simplistic, but the simple fact of the matter is, unless there are people in the community who are willing to take the time out of the day, like you all, and come in here and talk about what the next steps are, and talk about what you're going to do with this plan, and how you're going to further the creation of higher skill, higher paying jobs, it doesn't happen. And for many communities we are asked to help with, they have ignored their challenges for 20 years, they put all their eggs in one basket, they're concentrated all in one industry, and something happens, a federal regulation changes, a base closes, God forbid, 
a natural resource dries up or goes away, and they're left with nothing. We could sink our entire budget into some of those regions and it would make a difference. So I commend you uh, today for working together, for taking the time out of your lives and your careers to create those jobs which are going to keep people who grow up here and who go to school here in the San Diego, El Centro area, and the Imperial Valley area, who will, who will have jobs here. So when they get out of school, they're not thinking to themselves, well, the first thing I'm going to do is leave. That's not what we're all about. What we're about is, is building communities and regions where there are jobs, but not just any jobs. Because we don't want to sit here and, and create $8 an hour jobs. We want to create those jobs through workforce development that we take a kid who's making $10 an hour as a dishwasher and turn him into a $65,000 a year x-ray technician. It's, it's possible and it's doable. But without the teamwork and without the buy-in from the business community and the state government and the local economic development organizations, it just won't happen. So I commend you and your hard work, Christine. I know it's, it's been a long uh, slog. I'd like to put little parachutes on each of you and drop you into communities around the country that lack the, the foresight and the leadership. But on the behalf of the Commerce Department, I do want to say thank you very much for your hard work and look forward to being your partners in the future. Thank you.